All right, Brandon Jones is in the house. Uh, how you doing, man? Doing great, dude. I'm uh, excited to be back racing, excited to be doing our job again, and having a good time. We've had some good runs uh, since we got back racing. We've had some, you know, ups and downs here and there, and uh, got the win at Pocono on the truck, kind of got that off my back, so that was pretty cool, and uh, everything's been going great. Yeah, you've been having uh, some some good runs, as you mentioned, here and there. Um, but you still getting used to, I mean, clearly, as right before this meeting started, we're still not quite used to everything on the digital world. But uh, you, you kind of used to how things are going now? Yeah, we're starting to get in the swing of things. At first, you know, we're getting you know, all these documents, all these protocols, how to enter the track, what to do. And uh, it kind of got overwhelming at first, I'm not going to lie. You know, we're looking at all this stuff and thinking, man, but when we kind of looked at it, we're like, what's, well, it's actually the same stuff they keep sending out. It's just, you know, a whole bunch of it. So um, it, they've been doing a great job. They really have. I think NASCAR has done well at uh, organizing everything. As soon as you come in, there's signs, you know, right where to go. Um, so it's been good. Um, you know, I always was thinking, you know, what's it going to be like if, if I win one of these races? Um, and like I mentioned, I won Pocono and I get out and you, you look up, man, it's just, it, it is kind of weird. You know, you, you don't have anybody up there yelling or, or cheering and, um, but it, but it's still fun. You still get the adrenal, adrenaline rush. You get the camera out there, so um, you still have that going for you. Yeah, extremely different from your win at Phoenix compared to the win at Pocono. I don't know. At least for me, because we were both there at Phoenix. Obviously, you were there. You you were in victory lane. But it doesn't seem like it was this season at all. Do you feel like we're racing two different seasons? Yeah, it really does. I mean, that was probably the length of the all season, I would think. I mean, really close, yeah. if not a little bit more. So, um, absolutely, it is. It has that feeling to it um, for whatever reason. But uh, we're, we're getting through it, man. I think we're starting to get back in the swing of things. But the first race back, Darlington, I think it was, it did take a while to get going again. You know, I was thinking that people were going to be a little bit crazy like the start of the season. They're going to be, you know, driving the corners too deep and stuff. And nobody had issues. Like, nobody wrecked or anything. I was like, wow, that was pretty crazy. So, um, I kind of got that out of my head as soon as we saw the how the first race went back and um, just realized that we had picked up right where we left off. You mentioned your weekend at Pocono, winning in the trucks, but the Xfinity race didn't go too great. And you do that all on the same day. So when you're going home, you have literally the yin and the yang of the race weekend. You're in victory lane, but then you also end up crashing the next one. How do you walk away from that? Yeah, that was tough. I mean, if I didn't have if I didn't have the truck win to fall back on, that would have been a really hard day to swallow. And uh, those guys were up, and I think they they started screening at like four in the morning. So you know they had had an all day to be at the racetrack and, and working on the car, getting it ready for the race. Um, and then just to have that happen, man, that's what that's what hurts pretty bad. You know, it's just all the prep work, everything that goes into it. Um, but it's part of the game. I mean, it's gonna happen. You know, you're gonna have races that are, are not gonna go your way, and they're gonna go uh, south pretty quick. So. Um, Pocono, for whatever reason, has taken a lot of my race cars um, in the Xfinity series. I don't know why. We've always been so fast there. We've just uh, we've just been caught up in stuff that we shouldn't have been uh, a bunch there for whatever reason. So um, it was it was tough to swallow. But I, like I mentioned, I had the I had the truck race to fall back to, um, so I wasn't a hundred percent devastated. We got the win uh, earlier, so we're locked into the playoffs. We're not you know we're not sweating over uh, points or trying to get to the next round. Um, which points are still important. You want the playoff points. You want to be able to make sure that you're, you know, you're really secure when you get to the next round. But uh, we get a lot of great tracks coming up, so we can put some of these bad ones behind us. Yeah, that leads me to my next question. And, you know, it's funny. We were talking about how it doesn't seem like the same season. It still is. You still have the win this season at Phoenix that locks you into the playoffs. It, how, how much can you lean back on that before the playoffs start? Yeah, um, you know, there, there was a little bit to take away from. Um, we were, you know, obviously we had practice before all this. We were doing a lot of stuff. So I learned a bunch before we got here. We were able to uh, have a new um, system. You know, SMT kind of came down to the Xfinity Series, which is what the Cup Series kind of uses. Uh, they can, you know, overlay a car on top of your car, and you can kind of see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been utilizing that tool before the, the quarantine and shutdown and um, that really helped me learn a bunch before we got here. So um, I, I've got a lot that uh, I was picking up on and stuff um, that I, I made a huge notebook. I've been doing that this year. I've been collecting notes. I've uh, been mm -hmm. doing everything after the race and just sitting down for hours and typing up stuff that I thought I could have done better and things that I learned during the race. And when we come back to all these tracks coming up, then that's when we're going to really be good, I think. Is that something new that you've been doing, the, the notebook? Yeah, in, in, a, in a way, um, I've done it in the past, just not to the level that I've been doing it now. Um, I think that's just over years, you kind of learn what you need to be typing and what you need to be doing. 
um, it's kind of the first, you know, you're kind of green and you're typing just basic notes and you go back and read them now and you're like, I wish I would have done so much more, you know, so um, I've, I've learned from that for sure. I think that it's, it's helping a bunch uh, lead, leading forward. The SMT data, which you mentioned, I've seen it at glances, but it seems like, you know, in the industry, because it's, you know, it's team secrets right there. No one really wants to show you what it is. What exactly is it for, for fans to understand? Yeah, so actually for fans that, you know, watch TV, sometimes you'll actually see them utilize it on the broadcast. Um, mm-hmm. It's pretty much when they take the kind of cartoonish looking uh, car of your car and they're going to overlay it with another car. So you can go through the whole field and pick any lap, any car, and you can, you can put, you know, the car basically on top of yours um, and kind of see where you're losing time, where you're gaining time. The Cup Series actually has some data on the car, so you can actually see a throttle trace. You can see a brake trace. Um, ours is just solely based on GPS. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to get 100% accuracy on your throttle and your brake, but they do a pretty good job of trying to, uh, trying to you know, use the GPS feed and then transfer it over to that. So that's kind of the basics of it. Um, it's a pretty simple program, but it's a, a very helpful one too. We've obviously not had the fans at the racetrack or or at least um, in the grandstands, but not a normal race weekend for a long time. Do you think the future of the fan experience will change because of all this? Or do you think we'll hopefully get back to the normal that we once lived in? I hope we do. I hope (laughs) that at least by the end of the year, we get some some people back. But um, I think whenever they open it back up and and, and get everything back to normal, people are going to be really excited to come back to the track. I mean, I'm, on social media all the time, reading comments and seeing what people are saying. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that still want to come back to the track. They still want to be, you know, that firsthand experience. So um, that'll be, it'll be fun to see the day that it gets, gets open back up to see everybody kind of flood the gates again and get back to the racetrack. And what about you off the racetrack at home? I know you're big on, on home projects. Is there anything you've been working on, especially before we were racing, working at home so much? Yeah, we, I don't, we dug into the landscaping deal right before this happened and ripped up every single plant, every bush we had. We, were, we had the big, big idea of we're going to redo it all. And now weeds are growing through every flower bed oh. and, and all kind of stuff. So we missed it by that much. We didn't have <laughs> enough time to continue uh, the, the growing on the plants and everything. But we've been having a good time, man. I've been enjoying, uh, you know, being outside. I've still been trying to work out at the house. You know, our gyms here are still shut down and we're still trying to stay on our top of our fitness and everything there. So um, it's taken up quite a bit of our day. Man, I was going to ask, because I'm, I'm definitely not as handy as you are. And whenever I try and work on something, something goes wrong. So I was going to say, is there a home project that goes wrong? But it seems like uh, you, you had one that went wrong there. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, don't, don't let it fool you. I think everything I, I do, there's going to be one little slip up. And then there's going to be things. So <laughs> absolutely, man. We, we've been working on a uh, wood project, too. And um, I love doing stuff with wood. But I think that there's always one time that I mess one thing up. You know, you measure everything out, you think it's all good, and then you go to put it together, and you're like, what the heck just happened? So uh, I, have, I have that happen all the time to me. Hey, yeah, that's just the, the, the little project you push off to the side, don't show it to anybody, and move exactly. on. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> Brandon, it was great talking to you. I can't wait to see you again at the racetrack in person, whenever that will be, and uh, best of luck to you for the rest of the season, man. Sounds good, man.